nation's favourite celebrities. Wow. Paired up with an expert. Get it sorted. And a classic car. She's beautiful. Who was steaming? Their mission to scar Britain for antiques. Is that antique? I'll take it, I'll take it, I'll take it. The aim to make the biggest profit at auction. But it's no easy ride. There's a dog chasing us! Who will find a hidden gem? Love that. Who will take the biggest risk? Will anybody follow expert advice? Yeah, okay, I know what that means. Yeah. There will be worthy winners. Yes! And valiant losers. You go Disaster. Put your pedal to the metal. Let's go shopping. Woohoo! This is the Celebrity Antiques Road Trip. Blooming X. Uh-oh, here comes trouble. Hi. Oh, hi. Hello, boys. <laughs> Welcome to lovely Lancashire, where today we're joined by all singing, all dancing actors John Partridge and Anita Harris and their rather dashing Datsun. When I found out that I was driving a Datsun, I was first, I was like, a Datsun? But isn't it a beauty? She's beautiful, and I love the wing mirrors. Where the wing mirrors are? They're like they're winking at you, aren't they? <laughs> John is best known as Christian Clark in Cockney drama armour, EastEnders. But John's roots are miles away from Albert Square. He's a northerner from right here in Lancashire. Yeah, I feel like me, and I think the older we get, I just love coming home. As soon as I get on the M62, my shoulders drop. I slip back into my mother tongue. <laughs> just, you know, I, I just feel like me. From the age of nine, John trained at the Royal Ballet and has worked extensively in musical theatre. But it was at Sweet 16, performing in stage smash Cats, that he first formed a kinship with leading lady Anita. If I could auction you off, that would be... Because um, <laughs> you are a treasure, Good a time, national darling, treasure, Anita Harris. <laughs> The glamorous Anita is one showbiz lovey that has enjoyed a distinctly sparkling career as an actor, dancer and chart-topping wow. singer. She always goes, but you've travelled all over the world. Let's see how our talented chums fare in the world of antiques. I don't really know much about antiques, but I do uh, collect... You've got one here, darling. <laughs> Pairing up with our celebs today are friends and road trip companions, Paul Laidlaw and Margie Cooper. Well, it's lovely to see you, Mr Laidlaw. Always a pleasure, Margie. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm very well. Paul's at the wheel of a sleek 60s E-type Jaguar, made before seat belts were mandatory and worth £125,000. Get that, lads. Car of my dream, series one, the pure one. Mr. Ferrari Enzo described this as the most beautiful car in the world. Did he really? Yeah. It's befitting our, our stature, I would say, Margie, do you think? So, I'm most definitely. <laughs> Only the best for you two. So, do you know much about antiques? No! Oh, you see, you always say this, you always go, but you've travelled all over the world. What a career. She's done everything. She has. Carry on movies. Did you like those? I was a wee lad. I was a wee lad. They were hilarious. Oh, don't go on about oh, them. I wouldn't have got all the innuendo. Oh, you wouldn't understand them? <laughs> Do you understand them now, Paul? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so grateful Did that we were able to have this experience Did together. And it's going to be fun, even though I don't know anything about antiques. Do you like it when your celebrity compadre is a bit knowledgeable or yeah. just a bit green? If they have a fixed idea, it takes the pressure off you. It? <laughs> <laughs> it's when they start saying, well, what do you think? And they, oh, no. Look, if there's anyone can handle it, it's you guys. Oh. <laughs> is that racy enough for you? <laughs> Hello! <laughs> we made it! Lovely to see you! Lovely to see you! We're going to have some fun! Isn't it, baby? We're going to relieve to see the pair of you. That's oh, just right. Oh, well, <laughs> you see that now? Oh, Don't no. be fooled. Hey, he's only kidding. Paul will duet with Anita in the Jag, which leaves Margie and John as the Datsun double act. <laughs> 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 Onward. The start of a wonderful adventure. So good luck, guys. 
looking great. Looks like a good pub here, darling. Do you want a break? <laughs> <laughs> hey, bit early for lunch, a hundred yards down the road. I've lived in Bury, Ashton Underline. Penwitham and Lytham Stans. Wow, so wow. you are a Lancashire lass. I am. So where are you from? Well, I'm from Radcliffe, born and bred. I'm always home. Probably once a month I'm, I come back. I think what I'm going to enjoy doing on this road trip is to have my eyes popping open and just seeing what's still around, you know? You're going to have some fun. <laughs> Those eyes are going to be popping out on stocks. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone is headed for auction in Harrogate. But we'll start today's shopping in Eccleston. There you go, there is a frontage and a very badly parked <laughs> car by the looks of things. <laughs> You're telling me. Bygone Times has an impressive 500 stalls over five floors. Look at that. Right. Oh, it's enormous. It's a dowsing rod uh, I think we need. Which way do you use uh, to tell you? I'd like to go left. Do you have a stage left? <laughs> <laughs> Both teams have £400 to spend, but where to start? Just look at the size of the place. <laughs> Every bit of China has a family history somewhere, doesn't it? Mm, that was Granny's teapot or... Yeah. yeah. There's a hell of a lot in here. How are you coping so far, Anita? In the short time we've been here, I seem to be going for things for, for my heart rather than what is valuable or not valuable or my knowledge. So <laughs> You follow your heart, Anita. All right, my darling. That's exactly the right thing to do. And that is good advice. Now, how are you really coping, Anita? I'm a little bamboozled by it all. You're trying too hard to look for a bargain or something that is so special, and I'm actually doing to say, please come towards me and then I'll know. It'll happen. It'll just come to you. Meanwhile, John and Margie are cruising through their home patch to the market town of Ramsbottom. What we hope for, too, I think I do have an eye for a pretty thing. I do like a bit of deco. I've got a few mirrors and things like that in my house. Our happy new pals are visiting the rather lovely Memories Antiques. Ooh, yeah. Excited? <laughs> what about that? Tell me the honey, mummy. Hmm, <laughs> well, maybe not. But there are plenty more charms inside, including dealer Jackie, who's on hand to help. Hi, Jax. This. What? It's Mavis locket, that little locket. That, that, what is Mavis? That's a name, isn't it? Is it a good name? No, it probably belongs to Mavis. Oh, right. There's about 29 dealers in here. Oh, so it's that's not so, Fabergé, so, it's oh, so, Mavis. Mavis. From Rumsbottom. <laughs> hey, that's the first lesson of the day, John. Mavis is one of the dealers. It says 40. That looks quite nice. Yeah. It's got an old candle in the bottom of it. Has, yeah, it's something missing off the top. That's a bit like me. <laughs> Over in Eccleston, what's caught Anita's eye? Oh, hang on. It's fifty-eight pounds. Okay, this is a very handsome jug, and it's Rabbi Burns, and I happen to be with a Scot. <laughs> but I like it. It's sturdy, and it's Beswick, so it's fifty-eight pounds. But look. <laughs> I might be able to get something off that. I wouldn't mind that on my table with a nice drop of maybe pims. <laughs> Sounds delightful. I'm up for that. I have found what I think is a nice sturdy Beswick jug, and it has rabbi burns. Beswick? You picked a good name. You've also picked a piece that I've never seen before. Do you like it? Does it appeal? Well, of I course like I don't. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, it's awful. Don't hold back then, Paul. It's a dodgy portrait. It's about as kitsch as they get. There's not a shred of tartan anywhere, which offends me. But it's my job to overrule the heart with the head. Yes. The head says it's got a brand. It, it's got a good name. Dealer Martin has the cabinet keys. That's one. 
do the honours. I like it. May uh, I? Please. It rings true, madam. That is the mould number. That's the model number. OK. It'll come in different sizes. And this is size two, but importantly, no condition issues. So much as a hairline crack would kill that for you and me. And but it you hasn't know what? Got one. Hate it though I do. <laughs> I think that's got traction. OK. Shall we? What were the numbers? Is this applicable, this discount sign here, Mark? Yeah, all items are 40% off. Might as well round that to 50%. Cheeky. Yep. That makes that. £29, but you might as well round that down to 25 which is a round number. <laughs> He's a bold one. Um, any chance that being £25? Yeah, we could do 25 I love it. I think it's fun. Shall we hand this to Martin and see? Martin, our first purchase. Thank you very much no indeed. No problem. You could keep that on the counter for us. Yep, no worries. So, Anita's heart and Paul's head gets them their first item. Whoop, whoop. We're off. Get in. <laughs> I think we're going to roll. That direction. <laughs> Back in Ramsbottom, John's found a sales cabinet too. Can I have a look at this one? Yes. I know you don't like this one because it's a bit common. No, 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 I've seen it. Seen... <laughs> but... This is Moorcroft, as you obviously know. Incredibly popular. It's very famous for this tube lining. It's very cleverly done. Moorcroft's colourful ceramics have been made in Stoke-on-Trent for over 100 years. The Queen herself is a fan. This one's around 50 years old. Well, I think that's quite sweet, but not. I can't do it for 60 quid, can I? No. No. I do like it, though. I'll be honest with you. I really do. I think it's really sweet, and I do... Phone the dealer up, if you like. Can you phone the dealer up yeah. and tell him I'm a really, really, really <laughs> nice young man? Will and I'm, I'm a local lad as well. I'm from Radcliffe. Oh, wow. So tell him, a Radcliffe lad... Not all lad, that against you. To, hey, don't hold that <laughs> against me. Tell him you've got a really nice Radcliffe lad in here, <laughs> and he loves this, but he can't do it for 60 quid. More like 30. Oh, what a charmer, eh? 30 quid be all right. I should be. Hey. Well, I don't think you'll get it for 30 quid. I agree. 30 pounds? Never. Is it 30 pound, Jackie? It can be. <laughs> Come on, let's have a cuddle. <laughs> cuddle for, oh, I love cuddle it. for Radcliffe. Oh, Jackie, thanks. <laughs> so I'm made up with that. You've done well. I, um, that's all I want to hear. You've done very well. Jackie, wrap it up before she changes well, her mind. Wrap, it, wrap it up before she changes her mind. <laughs> That's John's first item, and he's a novice no more. Over in Eccleston, Anita and Paul are still on the hunt. Can I show you something? That bench there, unframed pitch pine bench. Pitch pine? What is pitch, pitch pine? pine? Pitch pine's particularly resinous, and that gives it durability. This is less about the wood than the mechanism. See that slot in the seat there? Yeah. That back will flip forward on itself. I have seen these in old sailing and steam vessels. Oh. You also see them on trams. West Coast. Oh, West Coast. Oh, tram, tram bench. Tram there you bench. go, yeah. Bench was manufactured by Whitaker Brothers, Accrington. Local. Yeah. So sitting in the tram, we can be facing forward and then when it turns to go back the other way, flip the seat, and we're still facing forward in the direction of travel. See it? It's ingenious. <laughs> it's, it's Lancastrian what, what, what as... What year would this have been made, then? That's Nine... late Victorian. Victoria. Yeah, yeah. A proper antique. <sighs> £250 for one, £452. We can't afford to. No. Shall we see what we can do? Is Martin about? Martin? Yep. How are you doing? You all right? Your bench is, we like them. Can we make you a cheeky offer? Yeah. I'd be offering you half that, £120 for the one. Is there any chance whatsoever? I think that, that'd be a bit too low. OK. I think possibly about 175 I think. Can we maybe think about it a bit more and yeah, uh, okay. try yeah. and make an offer a, a bit later? A bit of thinking time required then. How are John and Margie getting on? John? 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 Yes? Have you seen these? Oh, vintage theatre lights. Good spot, Marge. 
Who writes this stuff? Yeah, 1950s London theatre. There's theater. no business like show business. <gasps> 200. Do they work? Oh, yeah, that's it. But lights do sell. How long have they been hanging up there with the coats? Uh, 12 months. Woo! No way. <laughs> 12 months. Nobody showed any interest. Right, Jackie, they've been up there 12 months. We're going to have to do it. You must be able, must be able to do me a deal. I'll have to phone him. You'll have to phone him. Come on, Jackie. Be a hero. You can find out what his best is for. Yeah. Okay. I mean, anything more than 100 and I couldn't do it, Jackie. If anyone can cut John a deal, it's Jackie. There she goes. Here she is. Oh, hey, that was quick. I've just spoke to him. What did he say? He said 100. 100? Yeah. Well, that's not bad. <sighs> oh. It's not easy, is it? Wow, 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 wow. Eeyore, that bad, eh? Can I have a look at them, Jack? Can I get one down? So if you get me a ladder, I'll grab it, get it down and have a look. Yeah, best see it close up before you commit. <laughs> Steady. Oh, my God, careful. You got two more steps. All right. Looks in decent nick. Any advice, Margie? I mean, this is what it's about, isn't it? Not sticking a tear cup and saucer up that's yeah. going to make you a pound. Yeah. You just take a punt on something that is on trend. Jackie, you got a deal. I'm going to do it. <gasps> yeah. I'll just go and get someone to get the other one, though. Go on, Jackie, get a man in. <laughs> that's what I always say. That's £100 for the pair of theatre lights and 30 for the Moorcroft candlestick. And John's off on an illuminating start. Anita, meanwhile, is still digging out treasures and has found a miner's donation box from the days of the 1980s strike. For some reason, I'm drawn to this uh, sentimentality, but also very much part of British modern history. Yeah. What are your feelings? If that doesn't move you, you're dead on the inside. That should be in a museum. There should be school kids walking past that and being told oh, of the, the importance of this mm. stage in our political, social, industrial yeah. history. Yeah. Look at the... Yeah. Your, this is primitive symbolism. Yes, it is. Yeah. It speaks then, loudly, doesn't it? What? And what are, they, are these original What do they here? say? Yeah. Uh, uh, support uh, the National mine. Union Miners, support the miners. Uh, yes. Uh, stop pit closures. Very sad time. Very sad time. Ticket price, £125. Time to talk cash with the dealer, John. Does it have to be that price, or can no, you...? No, no. Tickets only starting price. Can we offer 50 pence? How can we offer 50 pounds? That's pretty tight. It would have to be a bit more than that. OK, well, it's a bit more. How, how big a bit? 75? Split the difference. 70? 70. Yeah. Maybe shake. Yeah, of course you can. Yeah, and be ashamed to say goodbye to it, but we'll I look a, forward to seeing what you do with it. Gosh. And he is a dab hand at this bargaining lark already. Time to meet Martin again. Martin? We agreed 70 on that, so we'll owe you 95 for the yep. two. May we make you a counter offer, a final counter offer on one of those benches? Yeah. Any chance of 150 buying one? Yeah, we can do it on 50. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Oh, brilliant. 60. That is a total of £245 for the jug, miner's box and tram bench. What a haul, hey? Well done. Both teams are off to a great start. I like a bit of Hadley. I often find exposing a bit of flesh helps. <laughs> I don't know whether that's going to stand me in good stead. To, I, don't know whether that, in Lancashire. I don't know whether in Lancashire that's going to stand me good. I have in the past found... Well... That was a magical mystery tour. <laughs> <laughs> but good? Good. Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Well, there's more of that, Anita. Yeah. <laughs> onwards, ever onwards. Okay, my darling. Now our Lancashire lad and lass are taking a detour. I went to Royal Valley School in 81. Uh, and it was not fashionable to be regional. I remember yeah. people saying to me, you need to lose that accent. Oh, uh, and it was, yeah. I mean, I'm grateful in some ways now, because now I've got both. John and Margie have headed to Edgeworth to hear about a Victorian literary movement determined to preserve local culture amidst a fast-changing industrial landscape. 
Here to tell them more is local dialect historian Sid Calderbank. And here he is. Hey. Hello. Meeting a man in the woods. Hey. What would my mother say? Welcome to Lancashire. <laughs> nice to see you. Nice to see, see you, Sid. <laughs> Lovely. So, you're going to show us the way? Yes. Lead on, oh, Sydney. Yes. Lead on. We are in Edgeworth, halfway between Bolton and Blackburn. And 300 years ago, it was barren and open moorland, and the people bred their own sheep, they carded it, they spun it, and they wove it. But the small crofting communities changed dramatically in the early 1700s with the arrival of the cotton mills. A huge migrant workforce from across the UK poured into Lancashire, and towns like Bolton, Blackburn and Rochdale grew rapidly into industrial powerhouses. By 1860, Lancashire had 2,000 cotton mills, steam-driven mechanical cotton mills, and a little cottage industry around places like this just faded away. The larger, more diverse population didn't just impact on a way of life. Sid, how has the Lancashire dialect changed over the years? It's, it's like any other language. It moves with the times. When education became a big thing in early 19th century Lancashire, it was seen as, as somehow old-fashioned to speak in the old way. And so we get these tales of schoolmasters washing out pupils' mouths with soap because they're talking broad. Determined to preserve local culture before it vanished forever was a group of working-class poets and songwriters. Writing in the mother tongue, their work was published and performed all over Lancashire. So, it said, what do we have here, then? These are examples of some of the dialect writing that emerged in Lancashire in the 19th century. And they took as their inspiration, in a lot of cases, the surroundings, their everyday life, their work in the factories and coal mines and quarries, but they're written in their local dialects. So they're not that easy to understand. They're not that simple to follow. I'm from Radcliffe, and I see this one's from Ramsbottom here. That's probably the nearest to where I'm from. What, can you tell me about that? It is. This is Joseph Ramsbottom's book <laughs> of verse, which he published in 1862 which was right in the middle of the American Civil War, when our cotton supplies had been stopped and hundreds of thousands of workers were put out to work and they were starving in their own houses. And Joseph Ransbottom's little book here is the story of the plight of the Lancashire mill workers. And as we still kept battling on dark things about, far darker grew, to a fearful to a thinking man and fixed him greatly what to do. Then three days come and I begun to break in on my little store, and that a harder task I fun nor out at her had gone before. It makes me feel quite emotional to, to hear you yeah, speak yeah. like that. Mm. Anyone who's got any roots anywhere around Lancashire yeah. will immediately warm to this yeah, and come to me and say, you sound just like <laughs> my granddad. <laughs> yeah. These are distant echoes, fading memories of ancient tongues. It is our intangible heritage. That's what we've got here. The thousands of charming songs and stories offer a direct window into the past, and Sid's on a mission to protect them. And the crown prince of the dialect writers was Cobbler's son, Edwin Woff, born in 1817, who today has his very own tribute choir. Are you available for parties? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for 
Well, reminding me from where I'm from. And you win the prize for the best costume. Yes, <laughs> thank you. I'll have all of that, please. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye bye. Thank you. It was brilliant. Bye. <laughs> Time to catch up with the other two. <laughs> hey, someone's having fun. Next port of call for Anita and Paul is Haslingdon. The town sits in the lush Rossendale Valley, which in the 1920s was flooded to create a reservoir. To save the beautiful Victorian Church of St Stephen's from disappearing underwater, it was rebuilt stone by stone on the edge of Haslingdon. Now it houses Holden Wood Antique Centre. After chipping away at her £400 budget, Anita has £155 left to spend. I loved going around with my mum around the antique shops, for, you know, and, uh, in my 20s and 30s, because uh, there again, you're sharing something. Yep, you can't beat a good old antiques hunt. Tell me about that. That's a little Christmas tree decoration. <laughs> a heavy one. <laughs> and a rather special one. Needs a closer look. Externally, mm -hmm. that's a joy, is it not? Mm, beautiful. That form, the bauble, transports everyone to their youth and Christmas trees. Yeah. And this one here, even if it was just so much thinly blown glass, is perfectly attractive. But in parcel gilt silver, all of a sudden, it's a wee bit more substantial than that. But this was made by one Stuart Devlin. Became renowned for making these almost Fabergé-esque novelty little confections. Behold. Oh my, oh, look so at what that. what do we have? <gasps> oh my word, it's Christmas. That's the bed. There's a stocking oh. hanging. Oh, how lovely is that? that? Oh, isn't that delightful? Is a heart warmer. Well, what do they tell us? Stuart Devlin, Silver Christmas Bobble, London, 1982. There you have it. 1982. £195. <gasps> £40 pounds over budget. We need a Christmas miracle. We should okay. buy this if we can. If we could put every cent we've got by a pound, because mm -hmm. we've got to go shopping tomorrow, we need something into that. If the dealer would take it, would you buy it? It, it is a beautiful piece. Hello, John. You are needed. <laughs> I don't know whether you heard our plight. I did. I kid you not. We have a limited budget. Do you think there's any way on earth we could buy that for £154? Crumbs. <laughs> Oh, John, I could hug you. That's the spirit, John. The silver bauble is theirs. And they have one tiny squid remaining. Thank you. John, thank you so very much. Bless your heart. Pleasure. Nice job. <laughs> <laughs> Always a card, that Paul. Still, Christmas has come early for these two. Well done. Safely. Well, that's one day down. One day down? But we've got energy in us yet and another day to go. Right. Strong coffee or a glass of Prosecco? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Sleep tight, lovies. Good morning. It's a brand spanking new day. What's the chat in the Datsun? The last purchase we made, I would have just not even noticed it. You would have not and have looked. He, I saw his shoulders go upright when he saw it. Ah. And um, I should be looking for a similar reaction today in March. An upright <laughs> shoulder. <laughs> I'll look out for that too. Yesterday, Anita went on a spending frenzy with Paul. She bought a silver bauble, a tram bench, a miner's donation box, and a Robbie Burns jug. I like it. She has one paltry pound left to spend. 
John, meantime, bought a Moorcroft candlestick and some vintage theatre lights. Come on, let's have a cuddle! He has £270 left in his wallet. How are the experts in the jag? Thankfully, Anita's come into my life and uh, I've been moved out. I'm just looking forward to the future now. <laughs> I'm feeling really, really optimistic. The, the biggie. <laughs> I've got the biggie. It's a long time since I've had the biggie. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, matron. Want to carry on? <laughs> Now it's time for swapsies and a teasing peek at each other's buys. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> would you like to see my wares? Oh, yes, I know. Yes. Would you like to see my wares? <laughs> well, Theater. lights, theatre lights. I love the logo. I love the Strand Electric. Well, Strand, yeah. Apparently they're bang on trend, as the kids say. <laughs> That's what they say. <laughs> we did do a little deal. 100 quid. 50 quid a pop. Okay. It's a strong purchase. What? Stick a couple of tripods on those and they're probably £250 a pop. We are going to show you something, not so decorative, but I think powerful. An old steel toolbox, but... Yeah. What do you think of that? Miner's strike. Wives out there. Arthur Scargill. Their futures on the line, fighting for their survival. How much did you spend on that? Well, look, I don't know how you put a price on this. There's no going rate for this, but I didn't think it was expensive at £70. I think it's great. I mean, it's powerful, isn't it? Yeah. It's powerful. Yeah. Whether it's valuable is another thing. <laughs> but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I've got uh, one other thing to show you. Yeah. That's all we've got left to spend, uh, folks. No <laughs> way! <laughs> Best go spend it, then. Away with you. Right, we're off. Well, I kept saying to me, oh, no, don't do it, don't spend too much, and they've, got, <laughs> they've been throwing money to the wind. <laughs> da, da, da. <laughs> John and Margie's sights are set on Halifax in West Yorkshire. They're visiting Barnyard Antiques. Have you got your checkbook? No, we only did in cash. <laughs> what about these? It's Diana's iconic looks. Well, it is. Are you seriously hmm? interested in those? I don't look up a skirt. She's yeah, right. <laughs> I recognise that dress. That fetched a fortune at auction. We'll see. It's topical. <gasps> oh, lordy. <laughs> Careful, Margie. That's a very, very iconic outfit, isn't it? It's an iconic look. But it's a brand new doll. Yep. We do endeavour to find things of a certain age, John. You're in holiday mode, you are. Right, come on. Right, this is serious business. Oh, tremendously serious. Serious fun, more like. I've got one of these under my bed. Really? Yeah, gathering I used, dust? I used to play this when I was at school. I used to play the clarinet at school. Is there anything you haven't done? Blow his own trumpet, perhaps. Right, there's not much shopping being done so far. I don't feel I've got a killer item yet, and I don't want to eat into any of that money till I feel that I've got one great item. Best get back in there, then. Margie! Yeah? This. Ah! Hudson Brothers. Yeah? Harrogate. Harrogate, and we're going to Harrogate. A Victorian garden roller. Handsome. Heavy. I really like it. Yep, nice bit of Victoriana. Solid steel, used obviously for wearing the lawn. Yeah. I think this might be it. It looks as though it's had a little bit of a facelift, doesn't it? And it's been done very well. I like it, so I think I want to go for it. All right, we'll call Richard then. Richard? Richard, tell me about this. I scraped it, we're all full of paint. I didn't know what was there. Yeah. What would you be asking for something like this, Richard? I will do that for you, 280 quid. Whoa! <laughs> well, that's out of my budget because I've only got 270, so you're way out of my league. If it helps you, I'll do oh, 200 pounds. Richard to the rescue. Go on, get it. Come on, on, Richard! <laughs> yes! Dude, <laughs> epic! It's a deal. John has a killer item and 70 pounds left to spend. Don't put it in the Datsun. Easy, easy. 
Meanwhile, in the E-Type... I have a little surprise for you when we get to the next place. Oh, do you like a surprise? I... <laughs> now, don't, don't be frightened, little boy. <laughs> Anita and Paul are rewarding themselves with a trip to Oldham, Greater Manchester. Anita's a true pro when it comes to treading the boards. So, as a short interval between shops, they're visiting the Coliseum Theatre, a true Victorian gem. Now with an Art Deco front. Welcome to Theatreland. <laughs> <laughs> Feels good. Small regional theatre companies producing a rotation of plays is known as repertory theatre and the Coliseum has a rich rep history. On this stage, many famous faces, past and present, first honed their craft. <gasps> oh, oh, look, 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 look. Look how beautiful this is. It's splendid. Another circle of life, my darling. <laughs> and this is where life in theatre really, really takes off. It's joyful to see your face light up. And that's what happens. You walk through a, a door and you're in magic land. Shall we take our seats? Shall we take our seats? I would love to. Thank you, darling. The way that, that in the round, that means that when you're on stage, you, you can just kind of bring everybody in and then they come to you and it's just lovely. It really is. Now settle yourselves down for some fascinating history, lovies. The Manchester area is renowned for its theatre and is considered the trailblazer of the British repertory movement. In the early 1900s, provincial theatre moved away from rowdier music hall and towards more sophisticated but affordable plays. And it's thanks to one pioneering businesswoman, Annie Horneman. Here to tell Anita and Paul Moore is Professor Viv Gardner from the University of Manchester. Ah! Best seats in the house. Hello, Viv. Welcome Hello. to the Oldham Coliseum. Thank you so Hi, much. Good it's beautiful. So, what's this woman's background? How does she get to be so influential? She started the first regional repertory theatre here in Manchester mm -hmm. and the sort of seasons that we have here doing serious and classical drama mixing it with more popular forms of theatre. So a breeding ground for actors of today. Yes, their policy was that there should be no star performers, that all the actors should take their turns as having big roles yes. and that they ran productions for three nights and they changed them so there was a constant turnover which Gosh. keeps things very fresh. Energy level. Yeah. Oh. Instead of great long runs. Totally different way of running theatres. Annie Horneman came from an extremely wealthy family of tea merchants and graduated from Slade, the first British art school to allow women to study with men. She appears to have been incredibly independent right from her teens. She becomes a, you know, a cyclist. She doesn't like women's bikes. She calls them hen roosts. <laughs> and she cycles on oh, men's bikes. Oh, she sounds bikes, a great And character. she smokes cigarettes, in a <laughs> Turkish cigarettes in a, you know, in a hole there. Oh, and she, so there's this enormous sort of spirit. After inheriting a large sum of money, Annie turned her artistic flair to theatre. She became friends with writers George Bernard Shaw and W.B. Yeats, funding their early London plays anonymously. In 1907, she moved to forward-thinking Manchester, where, with a business partner, she bought and subsidised the Gaiety Theatre. This is where her vision for rep theatre, which till then only existed in London, really kicked off. Until 1917, they ran this experimental repertory theatre doing the little-known classic plays. So they start with Measure for Measure, um, contemporary plays on contemporary themes, encouraging local writing talent. She wanted to open the theatre up to a wider audience. Well, and... God bless her, I say, <laughs> don't you? And the wealth of all of her work maintains today. Her model for rep theatre has been copied across the country for decades. 
But for Annie, the First World War brought an end to her dream. By 1917, Horniman couldn't sustain the company, so she disbanded the company and the theatre was sold in 1921. When she was asked whether she was going to be there at the last performance, she said, yes, of course, because every corpse has to attend its own funeral. <laughs> oh, God. Bless her. She had a sense of humour. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd love to have met her. Yeah. She's somebody that everybody should know about because she's the person who created a new model for theatre in the provinces. It's all down to... Annie Horneman and the vision that she had when she came here to Manchester. Round of applause. <laughs> Round of applause. Now, talking of successful women in theatre, I think it's about time we had a bit of a show from our very own Anita Harris, don't you? The stage is all yours, Anita. Lights. Both sides of this line can now combine. It's our show, it's your show, it's ours, yours, mine. Encore! Encore! <laughs> For their last antiques shopping spree, both teams are making their way to Hebden Bridge. Paul was has a very good nose and, and, and that's and what's he, putting me that's off. That's putting me off, yeah. But I'm not that bothered. I believe you. And our last shop ahead of us. Shop. This is the challenge of a lifetime. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. This antique centre is in the old police station. And hello, hello then. What have we got here? It's Margie and John, first to arrive. It's ladies first. Get your money out. <laughs> <laughs> John has £70 left of his 400 budget and is itching to spend it. I quite like them. I know you're not so keen. Well, no, I'm just uh, worrying about uh, a yeah, small fine. thing called profit. <sighs> you're such a killjoy with your profit, profit. Not sure John understands this game. <laughs> Here come the big spenders. On you go, Anita. Yeah. <laughs> How are you, Ma? How are you doing? Fancy seeing you. You come to spend yeah. a pound, <laughs> eh? Well, it's better have than spending you a pound. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling we are going to find something. So Come let's back. get on oh. our bikes and go. Ski uh, It's been very well, average well, seeing you again. <laughs> <for a pound. laughs> right. What can Anita and Paul find? That dates to the Second World War. And that is a propaganda leaflet in German, dropped by the RAF over Germany in the last months of the war. What does this do? Demoralizes them. Impossible to imagine. 10 pounds. So I think it's a bargain. But you know what? We can't afford it. We've got a pound. Oh, we've only got a pound. <laughs> <laughs> we've had it. I'm going to put this one back and we better keep looking. OK, all right, done. Off you pop, then. John, meanwhile, is keeping an eye on the time. I like it. Yeah. You don't like it. Well, it's a lot of money, isn't it? I mean, it's £120 and I don't have that. Yeah, you're asking for... For 50 quid off. And what if you gave it me for 69 and I got something else and I got something for a pound? Oh, you're well. determined, aren't you? And determined to join Anita's one pound club too, eh? Copycat. <laughs> Luckily, dealer Alexa's on hand. Oh, Hi. that looks like an excited face. What have you found? This is my can you help me face. Okay, I'll do my very best. I really like this for Dead Clock around the corner, but what I really need is to get that for 69 quid. Can you help me? Let me see what I can do. I will get in touch with the dealers and I'll, I'll see what we can do for you. We're counting on you, Alexa. Uh-oh. She's back. OK, OK, I've got a little bit of news on the clock for you. So, obviously, we've got 120 on it and you've offered us 69. But seeing as it's such a lovely clock and you seem to really like it, we're going to do it for you. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> I yes! <laughs> Find it a good new home. Thank you so much. And with that, John also has a pound left to spend. How exciting. 
Right, where are Anita and Paul hiding out? Uh, uh, step into my office. <laughs> what? We Tell may, me. We may have done this. See the badge there? Yes. That's silver wire embroidered, and that military insignia. And oh, scarce, it's beautiful. to say the least. What does that say next to you on that little label? It says, if unmarked, all one pound each. That's just the ticket. This is the, the crown of the realm, the monarch. Down here, we've got a right jumble, an anchor. And it's on a deep blue ground. Naval. Yeah. The difficult bit to decipher, the red elements. Those are, on their side, capital A, <laughs> interlocking. Oh. This is a badge of an officer of Queen Alexandra's Royal Naval Nursing Corps or Nursing Service. Oh. Well, that's an uncommon badge. Oh. That dates to the First or Second World War. They oh. serve the troops, the wounded troops. It's yes. just beautiful, may I? History, poignancy, History, yes. quality. I mean, that's a, that's a lovely object. It is, it is. It's just... Uh, I think it's worth a pound. Oh, I think, <laughs> I, I, I think we can stop looking, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> a very interesting item. Time to find Dan. Uh, Dan? Wow, wow. OK. Into my palm, and now thank you very into much. your palm. And thank you very, very much. Thank you, yeah. Bravo. That's your shopping done. We've got our pound prize. <laughs> Shall we go? Come on. <laughs> Meanwhile, John and Margie have found something for a hundred pennies. Oh, that is nice. Morocco leather. It's a vintage pipe holder with no pipe. That's lovely, isn't it? It is nice. You can do with a pipe. <laughs> <laughs> It's lovely, actually, isn't it? it? Is. I'm not messing about. We're having it. <laughs> having it. Wow, there's smoke on there. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's a pound for the vintage pipe holder and 69 for the wall clock. My treasures. Your treasures? You're my treasure, Margie. Aww. And they're all spent up. Hurrah. That's everyone's shopping done. Let's get ready for auction. So as much as this is a competition, I think we're in for a really good time. Yeah. I'm an auction virgin, Mark. You are an auction virgin. Can and I'm telling you, how, when you did sense. you last palpitate? <laughs> <laughs> Sweet dreams, eh? Rise and shine, it's auction day. Let's hope our diva and divo are in good spirits. Look at this beautiful countryside. It's absolutely stunning. Aren't we lucky? Certainly are. After starting in Eccleston, Anita and John have shopped their way around Lanx and Yorks and are headed for auction in Harrogate. Have you been to an auction before? Two, I think. Have you? <laughs> and I was very embarrassed, but um, I, thought, I didn't dare put my hand, hand up. up. <laughs> Do you think you're going to make a profit? Well, I'm going to be pretty darned upset if I don't. <laughs> Better bring tissues just in case. Harrogate's a popular spa town that in Victorian days saw the rich and famous coming here in their droves. Today, it's blessed with our four loveys who are meeting up at Thompson Auctioneers. Paul's wearing pink. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, yeah, how are you doing? Hey, how are you? <laughs> it's like an Am Dram reunion, this. Are you ready for battle? <laughs> no Marcus the Queen for either. Let battle commence. <laughs> yeah. Anita and Paul spent every last penny of their £400 on five auction lots, including that Robbie Burns jug. What do you think? Well, I didn't know that Robbie Burns was a lady of the night. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, don't laugh, it's by Beswick, which is quite a well-known maker. I think I need to bought it because it's camp. Is it camp? No, it's quite camp, isn't it? Oh, right, yeah, you're absolutely spot on. Isn't it? Spot on. <laughs> John and Margie also spent the full £400 on five lots. 
it looks like a pipe, but is it a pipe? <laughs> it's a pipe case, and I'm hoping there's some fabulous Meerschaum pipe in here. But wait a minute. <laughs> That's what you get for your money, Anita. You feel it? Never seen one of those before. And do, do Grandfather you, do you and father. Feel your life enriched now that you have seen one, <laughs> or couldn't you get less? My life is enriched because I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> you are too kind. However, let's not be kind to the pipe. <laughs> not impressed, eh? Come on. <laughs> what does auctioneer Kate Higgins think? Twenty-five. The hibiscus 1960s Moorcroft candlesticks, it's a nice lot. It would have been nice if there was two of them just to make a pair, but obviously Moorcroft very collectible, so we'll just see how it goes in today's sale. The Stuart Devlin silver Christmas bauble, there's been an awful lot of interest in this through the internet on the telephone lines, and a lot of people have been in the sale room this morning having a look at it. One of my favourite lots in today's sale, so let's hope it does very well. Today, Kate will be selling to buyers in the room, on the phone and online. Park your bums, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to our world. <laughs> OK, first up is Anita's Robbie Burns jug. Not very old. Good luck, bum. Ten anywhere, ten we have. Do I see fifteen? Fifteen, twenty... Oh, we need more. In the room, selling at 20. Uh-oh. Not the best of starts. Oh, we was robbed, Anita. I demand a refund. <laughs> Next up, it's John's Moorcroft candlestick. It's Moorcroft. Only 30 quid. No, that's a good buy. You're surprised I didn't... I wouldn't have you down as a Moorcroft buyer. I didn't like the colour. It was something I'd put in my house. So I was like, if I'd have it in my house... You watch, no one's going to want. £20. 20 for it, 20 we have. Do I see five? 25. No, 25 here, 30. Gentleman standing at 30, do I see five? In the room at 30 pounds. I shall sell at 30 pounds. Oh, wiped its face. Could have been worse. I'm fuming. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> raging. He's barely holding it together in here. <laughs> it's going to be a long day, this Paul. It's Anita's tram bench next. Which way will it go? I've got to admit, I adore you. Outside. But I don't like that bench. No. Commission starts at 100. Do I yes. Keep going. We Keep going. 110 anywhere. 110. 120. 130. Go again. Go again. 30 in the room. Come on, we're close. 140. Come on. Your bid, sir, at 140. Do I see Two more would be nice. I shall sell at 140. Oh, it's close. Prums her second loss. No profit so far, but on a massive positive, no horrendous losses. Exactly. Always look on the bright side. Now, the focus is on John's vintage theatre lights. Marty, I think this is going to end really badly, right? Just cover me. I'm going to leave a massive bid on those lamps. <laughs> on commission at 55, 60 anywhere. With me now at 55, we finish. I shall sell at 55, oh, no. 60 now. 60 now in the room. In the room at 60 pounds, I shall sell at 60. Ouch, I feel your pain. How much do you pay for it? Do you like rubbing salt in the room? <laughs> do you want a brandy, love? Next, will Anita's miners' donation box have more than sentimental value? Former coal mining territory, are we not, Yorkshire? Come on. This is a very spiritual item. I felt, I really felt something. Commission starts at 40, do I see five? With me here at 40, 45 we have, do I see 50? In the room at 45, I shall sell at 45. That's a real shame. And Anita's yet to make a profit. Oh, dear. So who's doing the best at losing? Who's the biggest loser right now? <laughs> Halfway point, and the first of the one-pound lots next. John's vintage pipe holder. Pipe case with no pipe in it. Somebody might have a pipe. <laughs> ten anywhere for it. Who wants it at ten pounds? Who's Surely asking for a tenner? Somewhere. Surely not. Who wants it at ten? The ten we have. There, in thank the room you. At ten, I shall sell at ten. Well, what do you know? 
A thousand percent. Stick that in your pipe and smoke it. (laughs) (laughs) Anita's one pound nurse's badge is next under the hammer. I'll tell you what, your thousand percent mark up. It's history now. now. (laughs) Your badge. Ten anywhere, ten we have, do I see fifteen? On my left at ten, oh, fifteen anywhere. Cheap. I it's shall cheap. sell in the room at ten pounds. Her first profit, and it's level pegging again. Oh, it made the same money as a pipe case, for goodness sake. Yeah, you see, our pounds. What? Can John's war clock do enough to get him ahead? I would have it in my house. I think it's retro, I think it's 60s. I like this clock. Uh, commission starts at 45 50 well anywhere. Um, With me here at 45 50 do I see. On commission, I shall sell at 45 Blimey. Could do with some luck around here. We're just falling short. Right. I think you did all right. Seriously, no great pain there. Next up, Anita's biggest spend and greatest hope, the Stuart Devlin bauble. I like that bauble. This gentleman showed his expertise in Only the quality he knows I collect of what this bauble is, OK? Collect those, Stuart Devlin. <laughs> uh, commission starts at 100. Do I see 110? 110, 120, 140, 150 in the room, 160 anywhere, 160, 170, 180, 200, 210, 220. On my left, 220. I shall sell in the room at 220 pounds. A fantastic profit. Merry Christmas. I think you're being extremely lucky. Well done. Marty, high five. Last lot, John's heavy hitter, the Victorian Garden Roller. The roller's going to fly yeah. out of there. It's going to crush the competition. I, I, think, I think we'll be, we'll be crushed. <laughs> I shall start with commission bids of 110, 120 anywhere. With me here at 110, do I see 120? On commission, I oh sell my. 110 pounds. <laughs> it's a total and utter disgrace. Take it home with you, darling. I mean, <laughs> take it home. <laughs> Have you got a garden? Oh, dear, oh, dear. His biggest purchase makes the biggest loss. Poor John. Oh, no, I've got to get a bear hug. Well, I was expecting drama, but... After you, Mum. All right. OK, let's get down to business. Time for the sums, then. John and Margie began with £400, but made a loss after sale room fees of around £190. They have £209.10 in their piggy. Anita and Paul started with the same amount and also made a loss. After costs, they have £356.70. They lost the least, so are today's winners. Well done. (laughs) I enjoy that. Never what an experience. Yeah, we may have lost <laughs> 40 odd pounds, but we not. came out victorious. Pat's on the back for effort, I'd say. Bye bye. All the best, boys. Bye bye. <laughs> Let's have a cut and call. What great, great fun. Ah, uh, darling, that's been the best bit of it all to spend some quality time with my nitty. In an E-type. <laughs> in an E-type. Yes, yeah, lovely. It doesn't get much better no, than this, my love. Perfect love, day, perfect day. Toodaloo, you too. <laughs> <laughs>